Hello, I am Titus O'Reilly. I got into comedy by complete accident. I uh, started a blog and a Twitter account and thought I'd do it for a week, like the gym. You know, you start with all this enthusiasm and, and then slowly it just sort of took off and then I decided to do it more and more and take it more seriously. And yeah, it was, it was partly luck, but it was partly like late in life. And I actually think there's probably a lot of people out there who could actually do comedy, but it's finding that you can actually do it is rare unless you chase it. Uh, I was working in corporate world, um, and I say this only half jokingly, I basically try and stay in comedy so I never have to go to a meeting again. So that's all I've ever really been doing is working to stay away from actual work. Uh, the best bit is just to actually craft a joke and then get laughs from people is, we all take it a bit for granted, but you never get sick of that. And when it works, it's just glorious. and. The best bit, the reason that works is there's always the chance you'll bomb, no matter how good you are, what room you're in, who you are. So you, for something to be really great, you have to have that downside, that chance of failure, and that's why it's really great to do it. My first gig was in the Yarraville RSL. Um, it was 500 people and I had to do an hour and I'd never been on stage before. So it was a very weird way to start comedy. The the worst of the worst bombing I've had, well, I've had I've had like everyone a few that you know have not gone well but the worst gig I've ever done and it it, it truly wasn't really my fault because it was worse than that is it was a drunken footy lunch and they kept pushing me back of when I was going to go on and they had other people up and then everyone started to get drunk and then as they announced I was getting up there was about three people left in the room one of them got off to go have a smoke and I was left doing it to two people who were on their phones the entire time so I ran through the material in record time and got out of there uh, probably my favorite comedian stand-up is Norm Macdonald I just everything he does is just I just absolutely love and study and watch that probably my favorite Australian comedy person was John Clark um, I just love the satire and the humour and everything he did and it was just, you know, it was so clever but it was still always remembered you needed to get the actual laugh, it wasn't just clever for clever's sake. Uh, the highlight is, I don't know, I have to say, you know, probably like the, there's lots of things where you do TV or radio and they're sort of amazing but I did a gig a few weeks ago at the Comedy Store in Sydney and it was just, the audience were just so into it and that makes you better. And it was just, that hour on stage was like the most fun you could really legally have. So it was just, th there's nothing better than being in front of an audience and, and they're with you and the fun you can have with that. It just, you're never going to capture that feeling anywhere else in your life. I think one, I mean, I'm an example of this. I think a lot of people now come out of social media and, you know, there's a lot of, you know, comedians who have done the hard yards in the clubs and stuff and sort of look down on that a bit. But I think increasingly that's going to be the way people come and there's negatives and positives to that. I don't think you learn the craft as quickly and, you know, so when you hit the a certain level of fame, you might not be ready for it. But I think on the other side, people like me who might have never thought to get into it can sort of if you've got ability you can actually relatively easily get into it and start it so i think that's going to be the main thing and then the other bit that always comes up is you know political correctness and stuff but i think often that's code often for just people sometimes being a bit lazy i think you can still say pretty much anything if you just come up with a way to do it it's more if it's tired you get in trouble than anything else I think with anything creative, I do a lot of writing as well, and I think with both, it's just doing it. I mean, it's people always say that, just doing it, but nothing beats the just learning on the job. You can't, you can't imagine how it's going to be until you actually hit an audience, so you've just got to do it, and that's the hard bit because some people want to enter at a certain level or achieve a certain thing, but you've just got to do the bad gigs, you've got to do the good gigs, you've just got to get the flying hours, and there's... No matter how you get into it, there's just no way around that no matter what. So you just got to start. And the one thing I give people comfort about is at the start, no one will care. Not even your friends or family will want to come to your gig. So there's a freedom in the fact that no one has any interest in what you're doing at the start until you build your own sort of audience and find out what you're actually about. I think the next thing for me is just, 
you know, keep building on it and keep getting better. I mean, I, I always worry about not so much, you know, what is my best stuff good. I worry about when I'm having an off night or the crowd's not there. Can you make even your bad times pretty good? You know, it's a bit like pizza. Even when it's bad, it's pretty good. If you can sort of achieve that, that's the difference between doing it as a job as opposed to doing it as sort of a, a hobby on the side. So I always think about that and am I just getting better at, you know, being consistent. I'm Titus O'Reilly. Thanks for having me at the Sit Down Comedy Club and uh, check me out on TitusO'Reilly.com and uh, got a book coming out soon called Please Gamble Irresponsibly, so check that out too and uh, we'll see you either on the web or in the clubs.